Welcome to episode 7 on my small channel's journey to monetization. In this series, I talk about my YouTube journey while being a parent and having a full-time job. So if you're new here, welcome. I share updated information every week or two about my YouTube challenge of growth and evolution. And I disclose everything what I'm doing and what I'm planning to do in the following weeks or two. So it's been actually 19 days since I made a video in this series. And since then I have uploaded 3 long form videos and 4 shorts. The first video is actually the previous episode in this series where I talk about what I did on the channel between the 3rd and the 11th of August. Now the inspiration for the second video came from my friend John Willis's channel covering a trending topic about the famous football player Cristiano Ronaldo. And if you're not up to date with the trend, about a week ago Ronaldo started his own YouTube channel and broke all of the YouTube's records for fast growth. Because he managed to reach 1 million subscribers in under 2 hours and then 10 million subscribers in the following 8 hours. And finally, in a week time, he hit 50 million subscribers on YouTube. Now at the time, the vidIQ score for this topic was nearly 70, with an estimated 4 million searches per month. So my video explores why Ronaldo achieved this remarkable result so quickly, and the strategies behind his success, and how you can apply his methods to grow, or even skyrocket your own channel. Additionally, I created 3 shorts covering Ronaldo's rapid growth, to 1 million, 10 million, and 50 million subscribers. I then link back these to the long for video, aiming to direct interested viewers to my explorer video on how I believe he achieved his success. I did this also because I wanted to apply what I learned from Ronaldo's channel's launch, and because one of his rapid growth strategies was to create different content types and lengths to cover a wider range of viewers. However, there are a few other strategies that he used, so I encourage you to check out my full video that I link here. The third video I made also addresses a smaller trend on YouTube, where more experienced YouTubers discuss why starting a YouTube channel today is much easier than it was a few years ago. I decided to cover this trend topics instead of making actual tutorial videos for a few reasons. In the past I have identified trends in their early stages but delayed making videos about them, which left me frustrated. And there is even one case where I made a video about a topic but jumped a little bit too late on this trend so my channel didn't get the attentions I received by being earlier. I am aware that making searchable tutorial videos usually brings more consistent growth to a YouTube channel and on the long run I will continue to make tutorial videos, however as a small YouTuber I wanted to accelerate the growth of this channel a bit and whenever I find a trend that relates to my niche I will prioritize making a video about that. And this is exactly what happened with the Ronaldo video. When I discovered this trend I was actually almost finished editing the video about YouTube becoming easier. But I immediately closed my video app and started researching this trending topic. Remarkably, I was able to create the Ronaldo video in less than 24 hours and I felt incredibly grateful that this opportunity came to me while I was on holiday and I was able to focus all my attention on making it. For the fourth short, I uploaded a quick tutorial showing how to remove the video background in CapCut in under 30 seconds. And I link this back to the long form video giving viewers the option to watch either the detailed version or the short one. And actually this is the video I sent to the video editor from Germany who I wanted to work with to speed up my video production process. So after his holiday he edited the video as best as he could but when I watched it I felt it needed a few revisions before uploading it. So I decided that the best approach was to schedule another zoom call with him to explain what I actually wanted with this video. I want to emphasize that working with others especially remotely isn't easy and I fully understand that no one can read my mind and sometimes I need to hop on multiple zoom calls to better explain my vision. But I also realized that I need to improve my communication skills to be more efficient to convey my ideas to people helping me with my project. So after the zoom call I realized that my vision for the video short required a significant time from his side and even my longer videos would demand more effort to deliver the message as I intended. We calculated the cost for a 10 minute video arriving at the price point of 250 euros. And he was so nice because he even offered a discount from his regular fee because he wanted to work with me, bringing it down to 200 euros for editing a 10 minute YouTube video. But even this fee exceeded my budget for this activity, so we decided to part ways, potentially revising the discussion in the future 
when the channel starts generating revenue. So I spent the following afternoon editing this video myself, exactly as I envisioned it, and I'm quite pleased with the result, considering my current skill level. I then uploaded it to YouTube and linked it to the long version I created at the beginning of the month, hoping to convert some short-form viewers into long-form watchers and potentially gain new subscribers. Now the short is performing quite well in my opinion, because it has over 400 views and it is consistently being discovered in search, hopefully driving some traffic to the long form video. So I'll link it here so you can check it out if you're curious. Now for the following week or so, I plan to make a video tutorial and one trending video before the next episode because I have identified three more topics that could be a good fit for my channel. And to find trends, I usually look at channels that are slightly ahead of me on the YouTube journey, and the videos I'm looking at should have at least as many views as the channel has subscribers in the first week. Ideally, I prefer videos with at least three times more views than the channel subscriber count. And to speed up this process, I use vidIQ because it provides an outlier score for each video, allowing me to quickly scan the search results. And you can use it too by installing the free Chrome extensions. I'm not sponsored by them, but I leave my affiliate link in the description because I think it's an awesome tool to have in your YouTuber toolbox. And when I find a video topic I like, I search for that exact title on YouTube. And if I find one or two similar videos made in the last three months or so by creators of the similar size, I then prioritize that idea and try to make my own version with my own spin on it. I'm not copying the script, I just use it as an inspiration because this technique is used by many creators, both big and small, and it can help you grow your channel faster. I know many of you are planning to start or have already started on YouTube because you like the idea and the process of making videos. But if you actually want to grow your channel, you have to focus on your audience instead of yourself. And this means to create content that the audience wants to watch rather than what you want to make. I like to compare this to Netflix. Because think of it this way. If you start watching a new show with 10 episodes, as soon as you've watched the first episode, you want the journey to continue. You wouldn't want to jump from episode 5 to episode 10. Instead, you want to binge watch from episode to episode and not to watch the episodes in random order. This relates to creating binge-worthy content so viewers can come back and watch more. I think this is the number one reason many small channels aren't growing faster because they're making random content. And actually this damages their growth because they're not sticking to the same niche, attracting viewers with different interests. And even if one video starts to gain traction and the algorithm gets a sense of what your viewers want to watch, if you make a video in a different niche, all the information gathered by these algorithms becomes useless. And with the new content, your growth starts from zero. I know it might sound boring to make videos repeatedly on the same subject, but if you want to grow your channel, this is the way to do it. And trending videos have a higher chance of going viral, but you have to catch the wave early. While this doesn't guarantee that your channel will blow up, having many trending videos increases the chance of your success. And after applying this technique to 5 or 10 videos, you'll likely find that one or more gain more traction than others. And once you made a few, you can identify what works best for your channel and then double down on that specific topic to further boost your growth. Now to get back on track, I think I'll make a video tutorial on another one of CapCut's features because this topic is doing well for my channel, so I'll continue to focus on it. Now to sum it up, for the next period, I will make one trending video and one tutorial before shooting my next episode in this playlist, even if it takes me more than one or two weeks to make this. And now before we dive into the analytics for the last period, I want to touch on a final point regarding my workflow improvement. Because my channel now has 20 long form videos and while the production process is relatively stable, I aim to decrease the time between making these videos. And one area that I think it can use some improvement is the streamlining process between finalizing the video script and getting it up to record. Currently, the setup before recording takes longer than ideal because it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to configure my phone, to set up my microphone, and then the script, and then wirelessly screen mirror my phone's camera on my laptop for framing. And another consuming step is transferring the recording file from my phone to my computer, because AirDrop can take over half an hour in preparation mode before the file is ready to be actually sent. So for this, I'm considering a workaround using OBS Studio, a free software that works on both Mac and PC, and many popular YouTubers use it 
and I want to try to incorporate it into my workflow for several reasons. First is because I can save everything directly on my computer. Second, to see myself on my computer screen. And third is because I can connect my external Elgato mic directly to my laptop. And with this setup would allow me to adjust the mic settings in the Elgato app and then connect it to OBS Studio. So while the recording is finished, I'll have everything in one place ready for editing. Now let's go to my computer and see the analytics in the YouTube Studio desktop. So here I am at my computer with YouTube Studio desktop open and we are looking at the period between the 12th and 30th of August. I have uploaded three long form videos and four shorts during this time. The channel received a little bit over 4900 views, almost 62 watch time hours and an impressive 62 new subscribers. So this marks another amazing period for the growth of my channel. And with this I'd like to warmly welcome all new subscribers joining my YouTube journey and thank you all existing subscribers for continuing to watch and to interact with my videos. But now let's dive a little deeper and open up my tracking sheet to get a more detailed look on what actually happened. So in this seventh episode, we are covering the period from the 12th of August to the 30th, a total of 19 days. And during this time, I uploaded three long form videos and four shorts. The channel received 91,536 impressions, which is remarkable because it's nearly double the number I gained in these 19 days compared to the first 253 days I discussed in the first episode. Now, curiously, the average view duration dropped to 55 seconds, which initially worried me. However, I went back to YouTube Studio Desktop and I discovered this decrease was due to the high number of views on my four shorts, which naturally affected the overall channel average. When looking at long form video specifically, which is exactly what I want to see increasing, the average view duration actually rose to 1 minute and 6 seconds, meaning 1 second better than the previous period. Now if you want to check this for your own channel, go to YouTube Studio Desktop, then to Analytics, and then select the period you're interested in. Having this selected, click on the See More at the bottom of the graph, and in the new window, make sure that the correct period is selected in the top right. It usually remains what you previously choose, but is always good to check. Now at the top, select content type to view the number of views, watch time hours, and the average view duration separated into content types like long form videos and shorts. I also added a column for click to rate because it seemed lower and I wanted to see it for long form videos specifically. You can also add more metrics by clicking the plus button if you want to analyze by content type separate. Now let's return to the sheet. The average CTR for my channel is 2.3%, but for long for videos, as we saw previously, it is 2.4. When it comes to subscribers, I actually gained 63 subscribers, but sadly 7 decided my content wasn't for them. So as of recording this video, the channel now has 195 subscribers. But this is because it was the longest period so far, so in order to check, I have to go to the every subscribers per day, where it shows me a more clearer picture on what actually happened. So I have a 2.95 subscribers per day on average. The channel received almost 5000 views and 61.6 watch time hours. And when averaged out, we can clearly see that the actual watch time per day has nearly doubled compared to the previous periods. So that wraps it up for this episode. It turned out to be a long one, but I hope it provided you with valuable insight on what I did and how I achieved these results. I really hope you can apply some of these strategies to your own channel. And if you experience growth by following along my journey and applying some of the things I shared with you, please share it with me in the comments. Your success stories would make me incredibly happy and motivate me to create more videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video and want to join me on my journey, please like and subscribe. And now I'll be seeing you in the next one. Ciao!